This is Time Warner Cable's Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and joining us today is a real trailblazer in California and the nation. I'm sure you know her. Her name is Yvonne Brathwaite Burke. She was the first African American woman elected to the California State Assembly. She was the first African American woman elected to Congress by California, and she was the first African American to ever serve on the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors from which she recently retired. And it's not a surprise then that you are here to discuss what we know as the 2012 project, which is what? 2012 project is a project out of Rutgers University. In New Jersey. Right, mm -hmm. to uh, elect more women. Mm -hmm. It came out of a situation in 2010 where for the first time, women declined. Really? In terms of the numbers who were elected to office. And I think about 1992 being the year of the woman. That right. was right after the Clarence Thomas hearings. In California, we elected two women to the United States Senate, Barbara Boxer, Dianne Feinstein. And it seemed as if over those last 20 years, the women were continually being elected. But like you said, what happened? Well, the numbers increased in Congress, the numbers increased in state legislatures, governors, everything increased, and then somehow in 2010, there was a decline. There was only one woman elected, additional woman elected to the Senate, U.S. Senate. So Kelly Ayotte, I guess, would be from New Hampshire. So right. the whole move was, first of all, to study this right. and see what's happening. And it became very clear there needed to be an impetus for women and to encourage women to move forward to move up into elected office, and somehow they needed to be encouraged. Is part of the challenge term limits? No, you know what? We always believed term limits would open the door for more women. One because could say, the right. idea is if turnover. you have turnover, you often will have people who've been there 30, 40 years, right. and it opens the doors, and that happened. But for some reason, I don't know what the dynamics were in 2010. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone totally understands it. Right. But one of the things that's very clear is after looking at the statistics and looking at the number of women who are on their way up, and we just have to start giving women a boost. And that's what 2012 is about. And this is a nonpartisan project. This you is are not looking for Democrats or Republicans. It's, so it's women, period. But one of the things that they look at is maybe we need to encourage women at a certain age not to be afraid to run. What's interesting is so much of being able to be successful in a run for political office deals with money. Can you raise the money? There are groups, both on the Democratic side and the Republican side, Emily's List on the Democrats, right. that are looking to support women. Is part of this project trying to feed those women into their parties or any organization that will help support them financially? Well, we have women on this faculty who right. represent people who've been in office who certainly are available to give information. But this is not a fundraising group. This okay. is a group that makes sure women have the wherewithal and know who to contact in order to get information. Also, from an educational point of view, there's a need to track, and part of uh, this website, Project 2012, you can go in and you can track. Right, the 2012project.us. That's right, mm -hmm. and you can find out exactly what's happening. But one of the real emphasis is that you know sometimes women who today are at a process of where they their children are grown, mm -hmm. they aren't necessarily taking on the New idea projects, right. of going into elective office. Maybe elective office has become too scary. Right. You know, maybe the issues have become so difficult to really evaluate. And what's interesting, and you mentioned this to me, you're not necessarily looking for women to run for the biggest offices. You'll start at city council, um, at water boards, whatever it is, because that gets women into the process. That's right. And it allows them to advance to higher office. And we also are saying to women, don't be afraid to make the move. You know, today you see more and more women who are moving into top rang rungs in terms of corporate America. Maybe not as many as we should have, but we, we're just 94th in the world in terms of women in the Congress. Is that true? Yes. There are more women elected <laughs> to right. legislative bodies throughout the world. And obviously, in terms of people who are in chief executive, we see every day, women even in Africa, we're seeing women as president and prime minister. We're seeing women all over the world. Somehow or other, we haven't made that big step. We've had excellent candidates, there's no question. And we almost make it. But you have to have more women in order to be competitive 
to be able to move up. Are you finding that there are certain states where women tend to do better than other states? You know, I, I can stereotype and presume that in bluer states, women have a better shot, but is that just a stereotype? Well, I'm not sure you'd say bluer states, but there are states where there's a receptivity to women. They have known women. California with two women senators, right. you know you're going to have uh, more women. But there are states now, something like 10 states, that have never had a woman senator who have women who have filed. There are 63 oh, really? women who filed for the U.S. Senate. And are Republican many of them viable? Democrats. Many Some. are viable. Right. Many are viable. Many of them are in presently in legislators. Mm. They may be members. There actually are a couple of women who are in Congress who are running for the Senate. I mean, if you think about it, even on the Republican side for president, uh, Mitt Romney is looking at Kelly Ott, who I just mentioned, the United States Senator from New Hampshire. I mean, we could see a woman on the ticket this year on the Republican side like we did in 2008. That's one of the things. You know, at one time, Republicans sort of stood back and right. were not really looking for women. But they now have moved. They realize that women are a substantial part of the electorate, and we vote, and we're sensitive to issues. How can we get involved? Is it appropriate? I mean, are you looking for people to support the 2012 project? Absolutely. You know, it's an educational mm -hmm. project. It's not partisan. It's not a financial process. You don't have to say, give money. Right. All you have to say is go into this website. Right. And no ethnicity, no gen it's just gender. It that's is, it. It's gender. Right, that's yeah. it. That's it's it. It's okay. I'm, as the father of two daughters, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay and with that. All we're saying is to stay educated. And if you know a woman, you know, who you think would be a good legislator mm. or certainly move up into political law, encourage her. I want to thank you so much for joining us. You have been a trailblazer. It's really my pleasure and honor to know you. And I'm glad you're staying involved. You're doing so much. Even though you have retired from the Board of Supervisors, you are involved in Congress, you are involved in Sacramento, and now you're involved in helping women throughout the nation move through the political process. Her name is Yvonne Brathwaite-Bork. <laughs> my name is Brad Palmer. Thank you so much for watching Time Warner Cable's Local Edition. Thank you.